Today I'm giving you five different ways to get better and sharper photos. The truth is that you don't need the most expensive gear and the best glass out there to get the best results. Most modern cameras and lenses are more than capable of taking amazing and incredibly sharp photos, even kit lenses. So I challenge you, if you're not getting the results that you need, have a look in the mirror and follow these five things that are guaranteed to take your stuff to the next level. Number one is shutter speed. Now picking the right shutter speed for your situation is essential. There's a typical rule of thumb where you want to make your shutter speed twice your focal length, but that's not always the case. If you're shooting fast moving subjects, for example, like birds, huge birds like an eagle or something, you could probably get away with about a one two thousandth shutter speed. But little birds in flight, tiny little guys that move insanely fast like a hummingbird or something, you're going to want to be over one four thousandth of a second typically. Now shooting much slower subjects like sports or your kids or something, you can probably get away with one eight hundredth or something depending on how much movement there is. If your subject is static and not moving, you could probably break that two times rule and shoot under your focal length with great results. It all depends on what you're doing, but always try and err on the side of caution. I like to shoot with a little bit more than I need to avoid motion blur when I really don't want to have it. If you're new to photography and shooting on auto, I recommend you throw your camera into shutter priority and this is going to allow you to choose your shutter speed depending on your situation and your camera is going to compensate for the rest of those settings. This way you can be sure that you're going to nail that shutter speed that you need every single time. Next up is focus. Now this might seem relatively self-explanatory, but we do rely on incredibly smart and very accurate autofocus from our lenses and our cameras. But unfortunately, the mechanical aspects or even the firmware don't always work perfectly. So if you find yourself not hitting focus like you think you should, I recommend you pick up something like this test chart here and actually getting to the bottom of whether or not it's focusing properly. All you need to do is focus there in the center, hit that shutter button, and this is going to be basically a measuring tool to show you whether or not your lens is forward or back focusing. These guys are only a couple bucks to pick up and they're a great tool to test whether or not your new or used lenses are functioning as they should. In most cases, you can actually correct that forward or back focusing right in camera depending on what's actually going on. In other cases, you might actually have to send your lens away or your camera to back to the factory to have some work done on it. but most of the time, it's a really easy and quick fix. Image stabilization might be to blame if you aren't getting super sharp photos. And that might sound kind of weird because we pay a lot of money for a great image stabilization in our lenses, but the truth is that it doesn't always work perfectly. If your subject isn't moving at all and your image stabilization is on, it might be actually trying to compensate thinking that there should be movement and actually give you a less sharp picture than if it was off. So if you are having trouble with your image stabilization, make sure you try and turn it off to see what kind of results that you do get. Definitely something to try. And remember that we do have in-body image stabilization these days, as well as stabilization in our lenses. And they do work together sometimes, but it's not always gonna work perfectly. It's a very complex system. So sometimes simpler is actually better. Next up, if you're wanting to take sharp photos in less than ideal conditions and even low light, make sure you pick up a tripod. Of course, a tripod is an essential tool for any professional photographer. So if you're thinking about taking your stuff to the next level, make sure you've got a tripod in your bag. Now using a tripod, we can take advantage of having absolutely no movement or camera shake. We can use very low shutter speeds to get nice crisp and clean images and keep our ISO down. That's definitely one of the benefits of having a tripod handy. And of course we can use them in other situations as well when we're shooting wildlife or sports using a gimbal on top or even mounting it just for some extra stability. Keep in mind that if you plan on shooting any long exposure photography, which can be incredibly rewarding, as well as taking any time lapses, well, a tripod once again is going to be an invaluable tool. Overall, there's a ton of different options when it comes to tripods, different sizes, different uses, and of course, one for every single budget. I definitely recommend you picking up a tripod for your camera bag. Next up is body mechanics and your overall practice of taking photos. Are you utilizing a good confidence strap? Are you taking your camera and bringing it as close to your center of mass as possible? Are you comfortable in your shooting position? And are you pressing that shutter button as crisp and cleanly as possible? Even these little tiny things can make a big difference when it comes to the overall outcome and definitely the sharpness of your photos. And here's an example of that. Here I am shooting with my camera just stretched out right in front of me, not utilizing my strap. 
And as you can see, there's definitely some motion blur and it's not very sharp. And here I am this time utilizing my strap, having several points of contacts like my elbows against my body, and really being aware of the pressure that I'm putting on my shutter button. As you can see, it's quite a dramatic difference, much sharper, and definitely worth adding these little techniques to improve your photos. Here they are side by side. One last bonus tip for you is more about when to shoot. Ideally, you wanna shoot in the morning and evening and avoid really hot midday summer sun because believe it or not, heat distortion can ruin sharpness when it comes to your photos. That's right, over long distances and of course the heat that comes off our earth can really impact the look and the sharpness and the overall feel and quality of our photos. So it might not be as comfortable, but make sure you're trying to shoot early morning, towards the evening, or even on a crisp or cool day. That's gonna make a really big, big difference when it comes to the overall quality of your shots. And I know it's not ideal because we wanna be out in that best weather. That's just physics for you. So there you have it guys, there's five awesome tips for you that you can start utilizing right away to improve your overall images and definitely the sharpness. If these did help you out and you wanna see more stuff just like this, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching guys. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.